Thank you, Colony. When I was named president of the Florida chapter three years ago, the staff and board hosted a welcome reception for me. Oh, I got on mute. See, I already messed up. <laughs> Thank you, Colony. Sorry. Uh, when I was uh, named president of the Florida chapter three years ago, the staff and board hosted a welcome reception. There were about 20 people in attendance, but there was one person who was holding court. People just seemed to gravitate toward him. I have to admit, he seemed to have an unhealthy obsession with the University of South Florida's football team, but otherwise he seemed okay. Uh, I turned to someone and asked who he was, and the response was, that's Troy Fields. He just joined our board. During that reception, I learned that Troy lived about two miles from me on the west side of Tampa. So after the event was over, I offered him a ride home. It was during that ride that I learned that I had met the first person I ever knew who had ALS. We became fast friends on that 40 minute drive. I learned about his passion for traveling, his career, his family, his recent retirement, and I learned even more about the University of South Florida's upcoming football schedule. <laughs> when we arrived at his house, he looked at me and he told me that he joined the board to make a difference. He urged me to use him for whatever I needed. He had no idea what he was in for. A couple of months later, I had the opportunity to attend my first federal lobby day. Troy attended with his wife, Terry, and it didn't take long to appreciate the passion with which he told his story. He has the uncanny ability to make his story relevant to members of Congress and their staffs, no matter which side of the aisle they sit on. For many years prior to my arrival, the Florida chapter had advocated for and received a significant appropriation from the state of Florida to support the certified centers of excellence in the state. The appropriation started at a million dollars, but over a span of several years, it had shrunk by 90%. One of the Florida board's challenges to me was to figure out a way to restore that program to its previous level of funding. And I knew it was going to require letting our legislators hear from people like Troy. So in October, 2019, I called him and asked if he would be willing to make a trip to Tallahassee with me. He agreed, but also told me he wanted to make it a day trip rather than spending the night. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the geography of Florida, we have the most inconvenient state capital in the country. <laughs> there are no direct flights from Tampa, and it's a five hour drive one way to get there. We had to be there for a noon lunch with our legislative sponsor, and we had meetings scheduled until after five. So making this a day trip uh, required us to start at about six o'clock in the morning, and we wouldn't be finished until after 11. When I explained this all to Troy, he said, see you at 6 a.m. <laughs> so the meetings went incredibly well. Troy was as sensational an advocate as you can imagine. In fact, legislators we met that day still asked me about Troy. Thanks to his efforts and the efforts of other Florida chapter volunteers and board members, we've been successful in restoring state funding back to the million dollar level in just two years. And as important as that is, what I remember most about that day was the drive to and from Tallahassee. Now, 10 hours in a car with me is not something I'd wish on anyone, but uh, Troy took it in stride and we talked about everything. Uh, during that trip, I realized just how much we have in common. Um, we were born within months of each other. Uh, we have virtually the same amount of hair. Um, <laughs> we have incredible families who support us. We married way above our pay grades. Uh, we're both avid fans of underperforming football teams, and uh, we even like the same music and have very similar political uh, leanings. After I dropped him off at his house that night, I was struck by the randomness of this disease. Given all the things that we had in common, I could think of no reason he had ALS and I didn't. Since that very long car ride, uh, Troy has been among our most active volunteers. It would take me too long to list everything he's done, but some of the highlights include, uh, at the request of the national office, he served as the keynote speaker at the American Association of Respiratory Care annual meeting. He has been an active member of the Patient and Caregiver Advisory Council. He has taken on the role of treasurer for the Florida chapter board. He was featured in a CME project with the National Organization for Rare Disorders. He provided the patient perspective during the ALS Association We Can't Wait meeting with the FDA. He was a featured speaker during last year's virtual Advo Advocacy Day conference. 
And he partnered with me last year at the virtual fly-in day and has agreed to do it with me again in a couple of weeks. Troy's passion and zest for life inspire everyone who comes in contact with him. At a recent event, he said, quote, I know that I will not likely reach the promised land where ALS treatments and cures are available, but I hope that when it is my day and someone is giving my eulogy, they can say that I did all, to, all I could, did to ensure others could reach that promised land. It is my distinct honor to present to you my favorite car passenger, the biggest USF football fan you've ever met, and my friend, Troy Fields.